we will continue with the video. So we've gone over this here, equipment usage period. Now we're going to talk about assigning user data, user statuses. Uh, user statuses are defined right here in basic settings. You define user statuses. So you click in here. You go create your user status. So in this case, we may want for equipment. This one right here. Uh, go in here. You then you just find the statuses, create, inactive, obsolete, scrap, whatever you like. And this is the initial status. All right. You do that. And then what you do, once you define it, you could make a new one here. You could say uh, new equipment or uh, cars or whatever you like. And then you go back here. Once you define it here in basic settings, you go here, sign the user status, and you take your equipment category and you sign it there. <laughs> and that's it. Very simple. You guys are not using partner determination, so you don't have to worry about that. Uh, field selection for, ma uh, for equipment master records. So you go in here, and here's all the fields that you have for the equipment master record. So let's go look at one required equipment description. It's only equipment description is the only real mandatory one. Then you go here, check it out. You can make any of these mandatories. You could hide them, whatever you like. Uh, so best way to look at this is uh, when I'm referring to those fields, I'm referring to this right here, all these fields in IE01 or IE02, all the fields you see here. So that's that. All right, you can skip this one. Define le list structure for structure display. Once again, the structure display, what you want to see when you see equipments. And here's uh, what you see, defaulting in. You could change this up, add more, take away less, up to you. That's that. Define list structure, and structure display for install. So from here onwards, it's a, a series of T codes that are list edit T codes, and then you just define the default uh, screen, uh, default fields you see. So you could do it through a through a list variant, uh, list uh, a variant and uh, layout, or you could do it through here. Uh, Maple, if we do it, use it through the variant and list and the layout. So that is that. Uh, you don't need to worry about this one. You guys are not using utilizing those T codes right now. Training has not done it, and uh, business process does not demand it. So that is all you have for equipments. Uh, next thing we will look at is uh, is build materials. Uh, you do not need to worry about this. Uh, the solution does not have equipment and material data linked. There's no serial number. Um, none of this is needed. You guys don't utilize any of this. If you want to utilize it in the future, uh, this is a fairly complicated procedure, so I would suggest you uh, get the technical objects book and look into how this is defined. But you currently are not using that. Uh, it would be technical objects course. It's three days. Uh, it's It will be listed under um, equipment and this deals with the linking of serial numbers and material data to equipment and then you actually take your equipment and you manage it in, through inventory that's how that deal works so so we'll now discuss bill materials so if we look at bill materials you first set the create the statuses Here's the statuses, so one. Uh, you also set the parameters. So these are the default parameters. You'll see unit piece ST, bomb, EC. All these things are defaulted in. I'm going to show you a build material and show you how it defaults in. Here's the statuses, the default in. Active, deactive, you'll see it, number one. Define default values. You go in here, this is the default values in. So now if we go create a bill of material, and we go here to the header data, you'll see bomb status one defaults in. ST one. 
That's all the stuff that's defaulting in. That's all defined and configured. So then we go to general data. We're done with this section of it. Bomb usage. You go here. This is plant maintenance. This is defaulted in from SAP, so I wouldn't edit it. Edit it. So PM. There we go. Number four. You always use four for the bombs for PM bombs. You can skip all these here. Uh, the only one that really matters here is this one here: define history requirements for build materials. If you wish to keep the history of what happened with the build material, you go in here. Right now, as you can see, uh, plant maintenance is not being kept track of; just production. If you really want, you could put here number four, four which is plant maintenance, and then uh, bomb status one, and keeps the history, and you'll be keeping the history from then on. These fields here <coughs> define the item level. So when we look at a bill of materials, I'm referring to this right here. I'm referring to each item, the data that you see here, basically. Here's all the fields. You go through here, and it'll help you define the object types, material types allowed, etc. That's what this menu deals with, the specifics behind each one of those items. Uh, you don't need to worry about this. Alternative bill materials. And that concludes uh, bill materials. So that concludes uh, our technical objects here. So if we go back this video's set of videos have done everything here has done the bill materials config has technical objects equipment and functional locations so